Welcome back to Rotary Rockets. We've got something really exciting today. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that up until now, all of our motor casings have been made out of PVC. And we're really pushing the limits on that, especially as we go larger and larger. So today, we've got our first homemade, all-metal rocket motor assembly. So stay tuned, and we're going to take a look at some of the parts and the construction of this motor. And then we're going to take it out for a ground test and see what kind of performance we can get out of our first homemade all-metal rocket motor that we call the Robo Monkey. The first part that makes up the motor assembly is this one and a half by six and a half inch pipe nipple. Now this is 6061 aluminum, so this is very lightweight, even though it has a pretty good size uh, thickness on the wall. And we're going to use two Bates core fuel cells in this. Each of them will be three and a quarter inches long. Next we have the cap piece. Now this was made from an inch and a half steel pipe coupling. It was cut down to size to where we needed it to fit well onto our pipe nipple. And then I cut out a round piece of 3 16 inch steel and that was welded into the cap assembly. Now you will note that we don't have any location here for a delay grain or an ejection charge. We don't use an ejection charge off of our motor. Instead, we use an ejection charge system based off of an Apogee detection circuit. And then the final piece is our nozzle assembly. Now this also used a inch and a half steel coupling that again was cut down to size to fit well onto our pipe nipple. And then on the lathe, I made this nozzle assembly it has a 35 degree half angle for the convergent side. It has a 12 degree half angle for the divergent side and a number 18 nozzle in the center. And that was also then welded onto that coupling assembly. I've got the end cap installed. I used some Teflon tape to seal around those threads and we've got that on very tight. Hopefully we'll be able to prevent any blow-by from occurring there. We'll do the same thing when we put on the nozzle. We'll use the same Teflon tape. I've got the two Bates fuel cells cast and those are ready to install. They have their own paper liners on them just from the casting process but I'm also going to use a second liner as well just so we get some added heat protection for the aluminum in there. So I'm going to wrap those up in this liner and then slide the whole assembly in as one. I've modified the test stand to hold this motor and we'll measure the thrust with our scale. But just one note I want to make about the nozzle. This was supposed to be a number 18 nozzle, but because of a slight error I made during the machining process, it ended up a little bit oversized. It's around 18 and a half to 18 and three quarter size for the nozzle itself. So whatever thrust we do get out of this will be slightly lower than what we would have gotten if it actually had the number 18 nozzle that we were going for. With one and three quarter seconds of burn time and 60 pounds of maximum thrust, this motor was a complete success.